to the dirty little secrets you own that. <laughs> Things like... Uh, <laughs> that's not what I'm on about at all. Cut! Hey, what's up fellow travellers? So, after making my last two videos, how to create believable characters, and understanding the characters we create and where, I realised this cake needed its cherry too. The ribbon on top, you know what I mean? If you haven't checked out those other videos yet, please make sure you do so after this one. You'll find links in the description below. And make sure you stick around until the end of the video for a special thank you gift, which I know you guys are gonna love. The Bulletproof Profile is home to everything related to your novel. From the facts and tidbits you share with your audience, to the dirty little secrets only you're privy to. With all the advice floating around surrounding how to piece these together, from the super detailed to the bare bones approach, and the unending range of info you could potentially fill them with, creating character profiles or outlines can seem crazy daunting, especially after you've dived in headfirst and found yourself drowning under a swarm you can hardly see through anymore. Oh, I've been there. Oh yeah. It can seem Herculean to collect everything we need to know about a character or event into a doc which will prove to be a useful, organised system. Something which you can use with the intended ease. Something which won't see you bashing your head against the table screaming, WHY GOD, WHY? But that's what I'm here for. I've always had a knack for organisation. It comes supernaturally to me. That said, this took some real bloody effort. But after trial and error, strife and torment, persistence and a dab of black magic, I've discovered the secret to a successful approach to the challenge. So, I'm gonna need an honest answer from you guys now. Are you ready for your lifeline? Are you ready to craft your bulletproof profile, the foundation beneath your castle? Type lifeline in the comments below if you're with me, and let's get cracking. First up, you've got to use the right platform. Now, I highly recommend Google Docs for this, but really, any cloud-based platform will do. Now, for the uninitiated, cloud-based just means your files don't live on your computer, which gives you two bonuses straight away. First, you can access your docs anywhere in the world with an internet connection. Second, say sayonara to those nail-biting worries of corrupted or lost files, although, you should always back up your shit externally, just in case. I mean, we never know when the internet is going to become Skynet and fuck us all. I guess we'll have bigger worries then, huh? Anyway, aside from being cloud-based, as long as your platform of choice allows you to type and organize content into navigable headers, it's all good, man. But the main reason for suggesting Google Docs is that any smartphone worth its salt will be able to link up to your Google account in a snap. And that makes it super easy for you to access and update your files whenever you need to. Now, as I've hinted at, I use this doc to track not only my characters, but the future of my story as well. Plot points, twists, turns, and any other key elements such as races or crucial lore. Now, you may choose to separate story from characters, especially if you're a heavy plotter who loves detailed story planning. Again, this is simply what's worked for me. One home, one lifeline I can turn to, I can dip into for guidance, or as a reminder of anything and everything related to my story at the drop of a hat. No doubt others will have different opinions to mine, and I cannot wait to hear them. Don't be shy, that's what the comments section is for. Honestly, I cannot stress this enough. You have to find the method that works best for you. This is by no means a rigid rule book, and even if it were, i tell you to throw it out the fucking window. After reading it, of course. Since this series has been all about character creations, we'll get started with what I found most useful to record about my characters. First up, we have the basics. I'm talking the skeletal structure of your character here, and I really do suggest you keep this section as brief as possible. This is for reference points, continuity facts, that kind of jazz. When was your character born and where? This will not only help you stay on track, especially if your story spans a large timeline, but it'll help you understand your character from the earliest point of their lives. People's age, where they've lived and grown up, 
all impact who they are today when you're writing about them. How have you described their physical attributes? We're looking for things like ethnicity, eye colour, height, hairstyle, length and colour, their physique, the way they like to dress. Do they have any distinct features? If so, were they born this way? Or did something happen to them? Consider if you need to record how these traits change over chapters or novels. Now, don't get too caught up looking for depth here, okay? By all means, consider how your character's appearance, race or status might affect their actions. Consider the impact everything you're recording has on your character and who they are. But hold your horses there, Captain Eager. There'll be time for these revelations soon enough. For now, we're just recording the facts for continuity and ease of reference. Trust me, future you is gonna love you for this one. Be as precise as possible. Jot down the exact words and phrases you used in your novel. After all, you wouldn't want eyes to change to a radically different shade just because a word was irresistibly bitching, would you? Those damn siren words. Arr. Unless that's by intention, a part of the character for whatever fantastical reason that enables their eyes to change colour. Sounds great, but make sure you note it here for continuity's sake. Got it? I know you do. And be precise with facts not directly mentioned in your writing as well. Like height, for example. Now, you're hardly likely to describe a character as being 5 foot 11 in your novel. However, you should definitely make a note of that shit here. It'll help you. Somewhere along the line, I promise. Next, we have what I like to call skills and equipment. In this section, you'll note down anything prominent about your character which doesn't fit the bare bones essentials. Maybe they have a unique weapon or tool, like a sonic screwdriver, a magic pen, some prized jewellery, or even a favoured car like Dean's Impala, Baby. Maybe they stole Zeus's beard and use it as a face warmer. Perhaps they have special abilities, either superhuman or talents honed to mastery, or any any level at all. Ask yourself how your character attained each of these skills and equipment. Do they get their hands on them over the course of the novel or before the story gets rolling? Do they have a hobby turned discipline or perhaps they're just naturally talented? Lucky bastards. Use this section to record this kind of information and again be as specific as possible. Record the exact words and phrases you've used to describe these skills and equipment in your novel. Does your character favour them or use them begrudgingly? Asking these questions is going to paint you a really clear picture of who your character is while you work. And again, while I want you to consider how everything you're recording helps shape your character, I really don't advise going into too much detail not just yet. We're getting to that, I promise. Really fucking soon. So by now, we've got a pretty clear picture forming here. We can easily pinpoint our character's bio, names, nicknames, origins, appearance, and what they're capable of. Now, for the series watchers paying attention, we're missing something fairly critical to bring this character's image to life. This will likely be your bulkiest section yet, because brace yourselves, up next we have motivations, perspectives and goals. Use this section to take stock of what drives your characters, what shapes their perceptions and what their goals are. How do they see the world? What do they fear and why? What caused that fear? What do they believe in and why? Do they shy away from conflict? Or do they rise to meet it head on? How do they present themselves? The key point of this is to understand not only what's presented on the surface, but why the character acts and feels this way. What has led to this trait or belief? Here is where you might record how a tragic upbringing by Cal's parents scarred the character, or what events fueled their fire and led them on the path they now walk, who and what they would give everything for. I know plenty who would advise to track this in the previous sections, right alongside the fact in question. But I found, by holding back on the full details until this point, I was really able to draw on the usefulness of the Bulletproof profile. After all, we are not looking for a document we can sit and study. We're looking for a lifeline, something we can use in the heat of the moment, which is why this is where I would not advise you to use the exact words and phrases you have in your novel. 
Oh no, he didn't just say that. Oh yeah, oh yeah, he did. Otherwise, this section's gonna soon grow into a bloody monstrosity, and you're never gonna get anything useful out of it. I would suggest summarizing a general point first, then expanding on it using sub-bullet points to draw a clear picture of this influence or trait and how or why it affects your character. Try to get as specific as possible with the first bullet point. Ideally, we're looking for the root trait to handle first, something we can spot at a glance, then explore further. So, if your character suffered a childhood trauma, a brief outline of that tragedy as a leading bullet point might read severe trust issues. Then we can elaborate further on the why and explore the exact events which led to this trust issue as well as our character's feelings towards this and any exceptions or influences which impact this and how these will develop. And it's worth remembering these won't always be negative events and influences. Do not overlook the positive ones. In truth, you can pop in any trait into a leading bullet point which you feel will be useful and which fits the motivation, perspective or goals category. And I guarantee you, if you ask the correct questions of your character's backstory, everything that shapes them will fit into one of these categories. Record anything that you feel is a useful trait which will jump out at you on a skim read. What you'll end up with is a list in this section comprised of bullet points which sum up the flesh of the character and then expand on the depth of those traits for further reading. Once you get in the flow, you can easily isolate the traits which shape your character at their core and have super easy access to the how and why behind those traits. What caused them, how they impact your character and their decisions. I spent an age and numerous attempted profiles collecting all this information together in a slew of different locations before I realized the three words which perfectly summed up exactly what I was trying to record and why it was so important. Whatever may be at the heart of the matter, how the character grew up, be they introverted or extroverted, from a lavish background or one filled with strife, once you understand your character's motivations, perspectives and goals, you understand your character and slipping into their mindset becomes all the more natural a process. The final section for characters will call mannerisms. Here's where you'll record any favorite actions, gestures, or phrases, the way the character talks, their intonation, and any subtle nuances. Do they have any phrases they only use with certain other characters, like a call and response style interaction? Do they use any specific words or actions? In what situations? How about their quirks? Record anything relevant with the exact words you used in your novel, and keep note of anything a little bit more general too. Perhaps they favor flowery language, or use excessive hand gestures, like I seem to be doing all the time. Okay, now let's take stock of the image we've got building for our character here. In a snap, I can grab specifics on their birth, their appearance, how they carry themselves, what they're capable of, what drives them, what haunts them, and how they interact with the world around them. I'd say that's a pretty complete picture we've got there now, wouldn't you agree? I feel I can jump in at any given moment for that exact description I need, or the perfect nudge in the right direction for how this complex creation will respond to any plot twists and turns. Because remember, that's what we're creating here. A complex, living, breathing human being, complete with all their flaws and everything that makes them exceptional. Now, there are certainly more detailed approaches you can take to this. By all means, record the name of that secondary school if you must. Hey, if you feel it's gonna help, go nuts. I'm not gonna stop you. But I strongly advise sticking within these sections because otherwise it's so easy to end up drowning under way too much information. Just think about it. If that school is so important that you need to record it here, then it must have had a pretty huge impact on this character's life, right? So big, in fact, that it could most likely be labeled as fueling a, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? A motivation, um, perspective, or a goal? Yeah. Those are the words. Really think about it. You might be surprised just how much crucial character info fits into these homes. Show me a lifeline in the comments below if you're with me and hit me up with any of your alternatives. Believe me, I wanna hear them. My final point on characters is that many authors might state categorically that you need to understand absolutely fucking everything about the character before you get going. 
I tend to disagree with this. I sure didn't when I got started. As long as you grasp the key elements, you're off to a winning start. And believe me, with a profile setup like this, you can easily add to it as you discover more about your character. And to those who turn their nose up at such a statement, I challenge you to this one simple question. Do you truly believe you know everything about yourself? Or do you learn more about you as you walk through this life? So, now that we're wrapped up with the character side of things, let's talk about plot points and lore, shall we? Whether you're a by-the-seat-of-your-pants kind of writer, or a plot fiend overlord, you're gonna wanna have somewhere all your devious ideas, grand and small, can live. I write typically in the panzer style, for the most part, so I don't really opt for any of the traditional novel outline methods that are out there, but I do use a dedicated section of my profile for an outline, or grander story as I like to call it. Somewhere to keep track of plot points yet to come, like mile markers guiding my journey, as well as the lore which fleshes out the universe I'm creating. Plenty of which I know may never see the light of day. But trust me, this battleground of lore and future gazing has no end of usefulness. For me, this section started out super messy. I'm talking any and all notes I've collected just thrown together for the sake of them all living in one home. <coughs> ah, I tell ya, that doozy took a while to recover from. Once I found the right structure though, and spent many, many hours reorganizing and summarizing my notes, the gemstone's gleam began to finally shine through the din. You're going to want to split this chunk into as many subsections as fits your work, and I can't exactly tell you what these should be without knowing your story myself. But if you follow the same patterns we've been playing with for organizing our characters, you'll be off to a great start. Try beginning with your main themes and plot points, and then branching out from there. This can seem super challenging to start with, and you'll probably find your sections shifting as you work. This really is going to be a process unique to you and your story, so the best advice I can give is just to make sure that it flows and makes sense to you. Fuck what anyone else thinks. Those headers should serve as bookmarks to you that you can easily jump to when you're in the thick of a writing marathon and all 17 of your arms are way too busy. For example, my grander story begins by going back as far as possible, encompassing the broadest strokes which form the canvas of my story. This is the kind of info which may never be revealed but it forms an essential backbone to the universe I'm creating. And having that at my disposal means that continuity in the grandest sense is pretty much easier than farting after curries. Then I jump into a new section, briefly outlining upcoming events, which I can keep adding to on the fly. And while I will absolutely go into brief details about how these events play out, you can be damn sure I won't go too in-depth. Hell, I know my characters inside and out. Their reactions by now flow easier than my own. Maybe I should put myself through the character profile. Hmm. I have an entire section devoted to the endgame. I'd show you, but I'd have to kill you. And I really don't want to do that. We're becoming such great friends, right? After those key elements, I pretty much just go nuts with the lore, again, sectioned off as makes sense and fits my needs. As I've mentioned, this is going to take some work, some careful shuffling around, and quite possibly some irate hair pulling and angry threats aimed at inanimate objects, but I promise you, it's gonna be worth it. Stick with it. One final point I want to touch on before we say adieu is timelines. Seriously, even if your novel is titled 72 and takes place over the course of three days, actually, maybe even more so in that case, keep track of a timeline. You may not feel it's that important, but I guarantee, if you want to shift between scenes like a master and keep the pace flowing at a rate that feels natural, makes sense and doesn't jar, you're going to want a timeline. As before, the only rule I'd suggest is just to make sure that it works for you. I use one timeline to keep track of the broadest strokes, 
which mostly covers events of global significance and literally begins before recorded history. I use this to make sure I have unshakable clarity on exactly when each chapter and alternate perspective are taking place in relation to each other. And as ever, I am a huge fan of the summary. I'll jot down days and nights, brief notes of the events taking place, as well as a track of which chapters fall within these time periods. Using this method, I've been able to silence the nagging voice which questions, are you sure this could actually happen here or now? You haven't fucked up, have you? With a resounding, hell no! Because let's face it guys, we all know there is nothing more bittersweet than biting your lip and sucking up a glaring plot hole or continuity error in an otherwise fantastic story. Am I right? Yeah, you know I'm right. Okay, this one ran a little longer than I was expecting, but I really hope this has helped you and given you something you can take away which will help make your profiles as useful and bulletproof as you deserve them to be. Thank you so much for watching. As a thank you for your time and because I wanted to offer as much as I possibly could, I've created the Bulletproof Lifeline template to help get you started or even just incite a few ideas. Grab your copy using the link in the description below. If you've taken anything away from these tips, please be sure to smash that like button, hit subscribe and ding the bell so you never miss a new release. New videos are every Thursday and please be sure to share this video with anyone you know who might benefit. If you haven't already, be sure to check out my other videos on creating believable characters who will tug your audience's emotions any damn way they choose and understanding those characters, our characters, and how much of ourselves we pour into them. Thanks again so much for watching you guys. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please hit me up in the comment section below or on social media at Eldolf Norther. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Until next time, see you on the other side. Since this series has been all about crap, uh, crap, the foundation beneath your Like ethnicity, height, eye colour, fudge, not fudge, <laughs> idiot.